Back home, Tasmania officially has an AFL team after the state was awarded the league's 19th team licence. The team is now on the search for a new name as it prepares to enter the league in 2027. It means Hobart will now get a new 23,000 seat stadium with the project securing final funding from the federal government. Joining me live now is the Tasmanian Premier, Jeremy Rockcliffe. Thanks so much for your time. I mean, when we're looking for a name, Premier, it's really hard to go past the Tassie Devil, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's my view, Laura, and great to be with you and also your viewers. An exciting day uh, yesterday for uh, all Tasmanians, and this has been hard fought for, uh, but our time has come, and uh, to all the legends uh, of the AFL, the VFL previous to that, uh, thank you for your inspiration, and it's wonderful to see the aspiration on our young people uh, yesterday, alongside the greats like Jack Rewald, of course, mm. and Nicole Bresnahan, of course, AFLW, and indeed Alastair Lynch. Uh, but it's nice to be talking about the name and engaging the Tasmanian community and no doubt further afield. Uh, but look, you know, I can't go past the Devils. I've seen many um, names put forward, uh, but the Tassie Devils rings true to me. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, this is Tasmania's team and they'll have their say. Fair enough. Will they have their say? Or have they had their say about the popularity of this decision? I mean, I'm here in New South Wales. Uh, premiers have lost elections over the building of stadiums, to be frank with you. What do you say to people in Tasmania that can't quite see why this is a priority over other competing interests? Well, all government's priorities, of course, are the things that uh, Tasmanians and indeed Australians care most about, and that's uh, focus on health, our schools, our hospitals, uh, our police on the beat, and indeed uh, housing is a very big issue around the nation and indeed uh, Tasmania as well. They'll always be uh, government's priorities, but to ensure that we fund those essential services, we also have to invest in key infrastructure as well, mm. uh, build confidence within our community. and. Uh, there are large infrastructure projects uh, in and around Tasmania right now. Uh, tradies, men and women, uh, working on key projects. Um, they earn their dollar. Uh, that circulates around the community. And that allows us, in a growing economy, uh, to be able to fund those essential services I've just spoken about, that I care about, you care about, and I know mm. all Tasmanians care about as well. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, it was very important that we... Uh, build a multi-purpose entertainment and sporting precinct uh, here in Tasmania. It's part of the condition, of course, of securing the licence in terms of player attraction, uh, as well as providing a you know, world-class venue. And yes, they have been controversial, Laura. I recognise that. Mm. Uh, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. You know, we've got to have a crack, uh, have a go. And if we didn't have a crack, uh, if we didn't stand up and be counted, uh, we would just be sitting back and uh, wondering why we, once again, are not part of an Australian Football League, a 150-year uh, competition. <laughs> and as I said yesterday, uh, there cannot be no AFL without um, Tasmania uh, very clearly on uh, that national AFL map. OK, so what do you say to those people once again then? So this is a, a decision that's going to bring more jobs, more tourism, therefore mo more money into Tasmania and that you guarantee that they'll get better housing conditions and better hospitals? Well, we'll never uh, guarantee that uh, with a stagnating or economy that going backwards, uh, that we'll be able to fund the essential services. What I can guarantee uh, with a growing economy that we can provide for a caring community. And that's what I'm about, uh, growing our economy, securing mm. jobs, and then in turn, of course, uh, rightly, uh, providing for a caring community in all those areas that Tasmanians uh, care about. Our hospitals and our schools and our police on the beat and, of course, providing uh, housing for uh, vulnerable Tasmanians in terms of uh, social and affordable housing, uh, but also ensuring uh, in that supply investment of housing uh, that Tasmanians also have that opportunity of a slice of that great Australian dream in uh, buying mm. and owning uh, their own home as well. And so, look, You've got to invest in key infrastructure, uh, employ people, uh, grow the economy to be able to secure uh, and fund those services as well. And yeah. look, these can be controversial projects. I recognise that. They have been across the nation. But when you look at 
uh, the Perth uh, Optus Oval and indeed Adelaide as well and the Adelaide Oval redevelopment that was very controversial yeah. uh, they've just had the gather around there and um, people in the communities uh, where these projects have been controversial are now embracing them and that's I, what I want for uh, Tasmania I'm not a premier that's going to sit on their hands and do yeah. nothing and just you know <laughs> uh, bask in the glory of being premier and doing nothing um, you know you've got to be stand up to be counted and do the tough stuff because the tough stuff and the hardest decisions uh, bring the best rewards. Certainly. Is there a chance though, and you're not going to sit on your hands, and the real immediate problem is housing. We've been reporting on, particularly there in Hobart where you are for, for many years. Um, you know, could you be a victim of your own success? You build a new stadium, you've got an AFL team, you get more uh, tourists there. Yes, the tourism industry thrives, but therefore you get more Airbnbs, therefore more unaffordable housing, people un unable to live and afford rent or even buy their own home. What are you doing about that? Yeah, and uh, challenges that have presented um, across the nation, indeed Tasmania as well. And, of course, our population has grown some, by some 50,000 people in the last five years. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, a population mm -hmm. now of around 570,000 people. We punch well and truly above our weight in so many areas. Our advanced manufacturing, our best whiskies, the wines, our beautiful food as well. Uh, beautiful, iconic natural environment and a natural environment it's fantastic uh, we have a lot to be thankful for and naturally mm. uh, the focus is on tasmania and the tourism spend incidentally is now over three and a half billion dollars to the 12 months uh, back towards december and so that's grown enormously uh, as well uh, but i've just come from uh, a housing uh, project where we've got key partnerships between non-for-profit organizations the tasmanian government uh, homes, particularly for uh, vulnerable older men, and they're the projects that's happening right now. Okay. And they're the projects we've committed to over the course of the next 10 years, uh, 10,000 homes by 2032, a $1.5 billion investment, and uh, getting those houses uh, built, constructed, the foundation secure, uh, out of the ground mm. is what we're all about. And we are doing well. Uh, we're leading the nation, and ComSec report uh, just released uh, earlier this week. Uh, a number of economic leading indicators uh, point to Tasmania, okay. including uh, dwelling starts as well, which is I'm very, very proud of. One final question, because you're the most uh, senior Liberal in the country at the moment and you support The Voice. We know Peter Dutton's stance on this. That was decided by uh, the majority of his party room. What do you say to them? And what do you say to some of the concerns around the wording of the legislation? Well, firstly, I say that uh, you know, the Coalition and the Liberal Party um, have done a large part of the work uh, when it comes to uh, The Voice. Uh, when I point to people such as Ken Wyatt, uh, Julian Lisa, uh, the work that they had done because they believed in uh, reconciliation and believe in reconciliation, which all Australians do, including uh, the party that I represent, incidentally, and providing for recognition in the Constitution and uh, an ability uh, to listen uh, to First Nations people, our Indigenous Australians. And in Tasmania, yes, I'm very um, supportive of the voice. I'll be going to the referendum ballot box and proudly. Uh, saying yes to, re to recognition in our constitution, uh, to listening, uh, consulting uh, with First Nations people. Because what I see, uh, not only in Tasmania but across the nation, is when it comes to educational attainment, when it comes to uh, longevity of life, uh, health data, uh, jobs prospects, uh, in you know, um, incarceration, uh, these are areas of which this country has failed at. Uh, despite best endeavours and you know, well-intentioned people, uh, we can do better, uh, but there's you know, nothing uh, better than be able to uh, recognise uh, the 65,000 years of history and colonisation in Australia the last 235 years. We're a dot on that landscape and we have to recognise um, that colonisation has impacted on our First Nations people. That's why we need to unite the country uh, and uh, recognise, as we have done in Tasmania, we changed our constitution in 2016, a Liberal government and united the Tasmanian Parliament in recognising our Tasmanian Aboriginal people in our own constitution and we're on our own pathway to reconciliation, truth-telling and treaty as well. Mm. The important step in that process, in my view, uh, is the voice. 
where we sit down, uh, firstly recognise First Nations people, uh, Australian Aboriginal people, Indigenous people in our constitution, and then sit down and listen and how we can move this country forward together uh, with unity and purpose so all Australians uh, can benefit. Jeremy Rockcliffe, great to have you on AM Agenda this morning. We hope to do that again soon. Absolutely, Laura. Thank you very much.